Hey guys, so in this video we're looking at uh, factoring special products. Uh, so we saw these back in chapter 4, I think it was section 4.6, we used them to multiply. And now we're going the other direction, which is factoring. Um, this is going to show up in two places in our flow chart. Again, our first step is always get the GCF out of the way. Cannot overemphasize that. Uh, for this section, if it has three terms, it's going to be this kind, the second one that has squares on the ends. And so if you see squares on the ends, what we're going to do is we're going to end up sort of assuming it's one of these and then do a little check and make sure it was. It's easier to check and make sure it was than it is to do it the harder way and then see that it was, if that makes sense. Um, and if not, I'll show you when we do the, video, the rest of the examples. Um, the other kind we're going to see is the kind with squares on the ends but two terms. So this is our first two term problem. So if you remember these from um, 4.6, when we had a plus b, a minus b, they come out a squared minus b squared. So this time we'll see things in this form and then um, factor them to this side. So let me do some examples. And these ones are pretty friendly. Once you kind of identify what it is, this whole section is pretty much a maybe get a GCF out of the way and then basically just look at it and write down the answer. So not too bad once you kind of get the idea of how they work. So... Um, section starts off with um, so here's these formulas right here and then I made a list of the perfect squares what's going to happen is we're going to see this side um, the squared side of, of all of these and they're going to break down to the, the something squared so for instance here we got two terms that's going to be one of these a squared minus b squared deals you can see 25 is a perfect square it's on our list and so then that means it's going to break down to the fives so this is going to be x plus 5, that's our a plus b, and then x minus 5, or our a minus b. So a plus b, a minus b. And that's how all these two terms of squares are going to go. So kind of once you can do one of them, you can do them all. They're all pretty much the same thing. So for here, um, I see a 16. So 16 breaks down to 4, because square root of 16 is 4, or 4 times 4 makes 16. So that's going to go 4x plus 7. And 49 is 7 times 7, and then 4x minus 7. So hopefully these ones are pretty friendly. So these next six I'd have you guys try in class. So I see a 16, so I know it's going to break down to 4s. So it's going to be x plus 4 and x minus 4. Okay, for number 4, uh, 81x squared will break down to 9x. And then z squared will be just a z. So we'll have 9x plus z and then 9x minus z. Uh, this one might feel like it's kind of backwards order, but you don't want to change it because it's the x that has to have the plus minus, not the 21 or 121. So 121 is 11 squared, um, 11 plus x then, and 11 minus x. Uh, here, 50 and 98 are not perfect squares, but you kind of see the X and the Y are, so that gives you a heads up. There's probably a GCF going on. So it looks like I can get a 2 out of there. And that'll give me 25X squared minus 49Y squared. And then I can see my perfect squares. So this will be 2, 5X plus 7Y, and 5X minus 7Y. And again, any of these you can check by factoring. Um, these are pretty... You know, they're pretty easy to do once you kind of get the hang of it. Um, so not a whole lot of reason to check, but you always can check by, I'm sorry, by foiling. Uh, number seven, so fraction, not a big deal. It's just going to be one-fifth x, because one-fifth times one-fifth makes one-twenty-fifth. And it'll be plus two, and one-fifth x minus two. And so again, if you foil that all back out, you'll get your one-twenty-five x squared up front. You're going to get a minus two-fifths x and a plus two-fifths fifths x, those cancel, minus and plus gets you negative 4, so that would be the check. Um, this last one I'd have you guys try is a little tricky because the 4 and the 16 are perfect squares, but they also have a 4 in common, so you got to be careful to get that GCF out of there. So that will be 4x squared minus y squared, and then um, you'd have 4, 2x plus y, 2x minus y. Um, if you did it the wrong way and just didn't miss that GCF, you would have been at 4x plus 2y, 4x minus 2y, but then you would have had to notice you could factor 2 out of each of those. And then this one also. 
and then that two times two becomes my four. So it's much easier to catch the four at the first step than trying to catch it at the last step. So this next round is these other two formulas where we have the a squared, two a b, b squared. So in the previous uh, chapter, we had this piece and we went a times a to get a squared, two times a times b to get the middle, b times b uh, to get the end, and we used it for foiling. This time when we see squares on the ends, we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna say at least in this section, let's assume it is what it looks like. And, um, and then we're just gonna factor it down to this side. So all we have to do is look at the ends and go, well, what's a and what's b? Since this is the a squared 2ab b squared deal, it's going to factor to a plus b squared. So this is my a squared, so it's just going to be x. 81 is like the b squared in the formula, so it's just going to be 9 and then quantity squared. So essentially you're just taking the root of the ends, and then if this is a plus, this will be a plus. If that's a minus, that will be a minus. Um, so I am assuming that it this is of the form um, I wish I left myself more room, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That might make it easier to see again that the x is the a and the 9 would be the b. Um, but I am kind of assuming it's of this form. So what I always do is sort of the little foil double check um, that we learned in 4.6. So I'll go 2 times 9 is 18, because remember this, this should be 2ab. So 2 from the formula, a is going to be the x and b is going to be the 9. So I go 2 times 9, 18x, and that should match what I have here. And I don't do this as actual work, I just kind of do it mentally. I use the 2 here to serve just a, a visual. Um, again, it has nothing to do with that 2, or it kind of does, but not the same 2. But it's useful. So 2 times 9, 18x, there it is. Here, look at this one, and um, I'm noting there's a 5 running around all of those. So let's get those that 5 out of the way and see what we really have. <coughs> Take a 5 out of there, get 12, and then 9 on the end. And so you can see from here, I can't really tell if it's going to be magic or if it's going to be this style. But once I get the 5 out, then I can see those squares, and then that helps me get to the easiest way to solve it, which again is just going to be using this formula. So this is like my a squared, this is like my b squared. <coughs> so this is just going to be 2x, that's a plus, so this is plus. Uh, if I think of the root of 9, or what times what makes 9, that would be 3. So there's our a plus b quantity squared. And then my double check is just to go 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. And there's that middle term right there. Um, let's see, this one's got a GCF of best I can do is x squared. So I'll get that out of there. 81x squared minus 180x plus 100. So again, these would be like really huge numbers um, if I was trying to do magic or something. But because I see the perfect squares, I'm just going to try what I think will probably work. Break this down, get 9x. Break the 100 down and get a 10. This one's minus because the middle term is minus. So I just kind of assume it's going to work, and then I check that middle. 2 times 9 would be 18 times 10. There's our 180, so it is what we think. Um, here, same basic idea, just has an extra letter. Um, and as we've seen before, it's not a big deal. We just... 7x, this is plus, so this is plus. r is squared, so I got I do have squares on the ends, and quantity squared. And if I do my check, 2 times 7x times r, there's 14xr, and that's what the middle should be, so it is what I think. And then these six I would have you guys try. So this first one, um, x minus 64 would be 8 times 8. So that's what I would try, and then 2 times 8 times x is 16x, so all's good. Here, I don't have squares, <coughs> but I do have a lot of even numbers. Actually, I can do a 6 out of there as I look at it. So 6 into 54 would leave me a 9x squared plus 6x, and then 6 into 6 would leave behind that placeholder 1. That's really important. And then 9x squared and 1, those are both perfect squares, so it makes me think it's going to go 3x plus 1 squared, and I go 2 times 3 times 1 is 6x, so it is what I think. Here I can get, uh, looks like an x squared out, so 36x squared minus 132x plus 121, 
So I'd be bummed out about that 132 in the middle there, except that I see I have the squares on the ends, so it means it's probably going to be a really easy problem instead of a, a really hard problem. Um, but again, the key to that is recognizing the squares on the ends. So this is going to be uh, 6x and then minus 11 squared, because 36 breaks down to 6, 121 breaks down to 11. And then my double check would be uh, 2 times 66, which is 132, uh, so it is what I think. Here, um, extra letter, but uh, no GCF, so pretty easy. Um, 5x would be 25x squared. 1 to 44 is 12, so and this is a minus, so 12r in quantity squared. 5 times 12 would be 60, xr, and then doubled would make the 120. Uh, this one, pretty straightforward, so 64 makes 8x, 9 makes 3. Square it, that'll be 24 doubled, and there's our 48. Here it looks like maybe there's a b cubed in the way, so let me get that out of there. <coughs> so b cubed, 36x squared, and then that'll be minus 84xb, and here a 49b squared. And then I see the squares on the end, so that makes me hope it's going to be one of these. Uh, 6x minus 7b quantity squared. That would be 42xb, and then doubled, there's our 84.